Welcome to In 5 Minutes. The agenda of this clip is to understand clock generation or the clock generator circuits. Okay, let's first understand what is a clock. We have already done this. Let's have a quick recap. Suppose I draw a waveform like this, where this is 0 and this is time t. This is nothing but my clock frequency. A clock would have a cycle going from 0 to 1, back from 1 to 0, and again going back from 0 to 1. And once it completes one complete cycle from 0 to 1 or from 1 to 0 in this case, that's nothing but termed as one cycle or one clock period or the frequency of my system. And this is what we need to generate because this clock is going to drive all the sequential blocks in my digital design. If this is the clock and I want exactly the same replica of the clock internally, I'm presuming this is an external clock. So this is my phi internally and phi bar would be something which will have opposite polarity to phi. That means if phi is going high, phi bar will go low and vice versa. So we need to understand how to generate phi and phi bar such that it's synchronized with the clock, external clock I mean, and it drives all the blocks in my digital circuit. So very, very simple. I have a signal, say something like this. I want to replicate this. I can connect a chain of inverters, correct? And when I have even number of inverters, that means the same signal will come out at the output. That becomes my phi. And if I have odd number of inverters, it will become phi bar. That's exactly what I've drawn here. So this is my clock. It passes through a chain of four inverters. You can have as many as inverters you want, but there are some limitations because area would increase and we'll quickly understand adding more number of inverters, what can happen. But currently, let's presume you have added 4, you could have easily added 2 as well. And here, you have added odd number 1 plus 2, 3. So here I get my 5 bar and here I get my 5. Now here I have shown C1 and C2. This external capacitance or output capacitance of my current inverters interconnect lines. We know that interconnects or the wires itself have their capacitance. So this C1 or C2, which are nothing but load capacitance, has interconnect capacitance plus it can be driving another stage or another block so it could have its input capacitance which is nothing but next stage gate capacitance the interconnect capacitance and the output capacitance of the current stage so this is c1 and c2 and it's nothing but a simple chain of inverter circuit which produces my phi and phi bar now if you're smart enough you'll ask me technically you want phi and phi bar when phi is high phi bar to be low but here there are four inverters and here there are three inverters that means there will be some delay, correct? If I assume delay of each inverter is 2, then phi will come after 8 nanoseconds and phi bar is present after 6 nanoseconds. That means the way I want it, it won't come exactly the same way. That's correct. And that's where I've drawn the same circuit here again. And I've shown that we want the same delay to be achieved in this path and the same delay to be achieved in this path also, which means that either phi and phi bar both comes at 6 nanoseconds or both come at 8 nanoseconds. Basically, I want both of them to come at the same time. So that this difference, right, this difference between phi and phi bar at two different points, we just saw that it's nothing but clock skew. So we want to minimize this skew. We saw clock skew in the previous clip, correct? where there was a difference in the clock received at two different points. In this case, the two different points are receiving phi and phi bar. But we want when one block is receiving phi, the other block has to receive phi bar. Means one block is receiving logic one, the other block has to receive a logic zero. But because of the delay or skew, this is not happening. So technically what we want is we want the delay of path one and delay of path to be exactly equal to same. And this can be easily achieved by a concept called as logical effort in which we size the transistors or the inverters in such a way and we decide how many number of inverters we need to add and we also decide the sizing of each of them. When we decide the sizing and the number of inverters to be added in that particular row, we can achieve exactly the same amount of delay in both the paths. Again, I'll cover a bit of logical effort in other clips but it's complete detailed analysis of logical effort is beyond the scope of this course. What you need to understand is there can be n number of inverters in two different paths and the inverters in both the paths might be different. Still with the help of a concept called as logical effort, we can achieve the same delay and we can minimize our skew. So one technique of generating a clock is nothing but a chain of inverters. 